Hello and welcome to the weekly financial modeling tips by the Startup Station. Okay, today we're going to talk about how to make investors take your financials seriously. What a great subject because, um, of course, if you're an early stage startup, you've probably heard how financials don't matter. Investors don't look at them. They care about the team. They care about the product. They care about traction, etc. And all of those things are true. They do care about the product. They do care about the team. And they do care about traction. And there is a reason why they don't take financials seriously is because they're not built properly. They're not built in a way where investors can take them seriously, right? So investors are finance people. Of course, they would like to be able to look at your financials and use them in their decision-making process. But in order for them to do it, financials have to meet certain standards, right? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's talk about what investors want, okay, and why they want it. So what investors want to see in financial clarity, right? So they want to see exactly what is happening and when. If you're generating revenues, right, it's the most common mistake. They want to see how you're going to do it. They want to see your revenue generating logic. They want to see assumptions behind your go-to-market strategy, right? They want transparency, right? They want to understand where all of those assumptions are coming from. If you can't explain your inputs and whatever great logic you're using to produce the output, it doesn't matter, right? The result is invalid. They want to see realistic revenue goals, right? So if you show your um, go-to-market strategy and how it relates to your capital constraints, the revenue goals that will be calculated as a result of that strategy will be realistic because that will be in line with what you're planning to do, right? So if they see that, they also get more comfortable with your team, right? And with the fact that you will be able to convert your traction into revenues. They want to see correctly defined KPIs. Why? Because um, they um, need um, to have a way to evaluate success, right? They need to see uh, whether the strategy that you have is working and you need to see that too, right? So if you don't really look at the right ratios, if you don't have the right set of metrics, you're operating in the dark and again, it's not helpful and it creates issues for them. They want to see logical defensible assumptions for all the reasons that I've explained. And finally, the model, right? The model itself needs to be easy to follow, easy to understand right? And it needs to be easy to use as a baseline for execution because this is the main um, role for the model is to help you execute, is to help you react to market feedback faster and conserve time and capital, okay? Now let's understand why they want all of those things because do they just want to make your life difficult? You're already operating in a world of uncertainty. Why should you uh, spend your time to create a plan that you know is going to change, right? We know 70% of startups fear it. Why create a plan if it's gonna change? So here's why they want. Number one, they want to reduce execution risk. If you have a plan, you will be able to see sooner if it's not working. If you don't have a plan, you're not gonna know. Are you meeting your targets? Or are you not meeting your targets? If you have a good plan, if you thought it through, if you're disciplined, right, it builds confidence in the team, right? It builds their concept. Again, it reduces execution risk. It also serves as evidence of your discipline and focus because you spend the time to understand how your business is going to work from the financial perspective. That's the backbone of every business, right? And of course, a good model will allow um, them to have, and you to have a clear way to monitor the financial performance, right? And of course, fair. Uh, goal is to make money, right? Because they're not just investing necessarily their money, they invest in somebody else's money, right? They need to be in business in order to keep helping your startup and other startups to become successful. Now, what scares them? Let's talk about that, right? Why they would not look at projections seriously. Unjustified valuations. And notice here how I didn't say high, because high, what is high, right? High needs to be in context. You may have a valuation that is uh, high on the absolute basis, but it's justified and that's why it's fine. Unjustified valuations means that they come from financials that are not defensible, 
right? They don't have a business logic built into them. They are not linked to what the company is going to do. There is not linked to capital constraints, right? And so those um, financials typically have this hockey stick going up projections, which don't really represent strategy and capital constraints, right? They don't nearly really have business logic. Right, so it's not clear how you going to generate the numbers that you're presenting, right? And as a result, you may have a model which is incomplete or an opposite too complex. So much detail that it's not clear what's happening at all. Okay, and thus it doesn't really represent the company strategy because, um, you know, and, and I'm going to discuss, I guess, both sides of the puzzle. If it's incomplete, right, you're only looking at part of the strategy, then you're missing some of the important um, potential information points which affect how your company is going to work. If it's too complex, right, if you're trying to model too much, then uh, you're introducing so much uncertainty to the model because every assumption is an estimate that the result becomes random. And again, it doesn't really reflect what you're going to do in an um, easy to follow, remember, easy to understand way. And again, let's talk about why it scares them, right? Unjustified valuations will not give the investors return for their investment that they want, right? Because it will be uh, a greater risk for a lesser reward. It will increase execution risk, right? If you don't have a properly defined business logic, it will indicate the lack of strategic planning, which increases the probability of failure, right? And if you don't have a normal baseline, right? Which is the model that's built properly that allows you to monitor your financial performance, then that indicates that you aren't able to effectively evaluate uh, your strategy and make changes, right? And we've just discussed that 70% of startups fail, right? And so your ability to make changes and adjust is absolutely critical to survive. So I hope that you now understand how to build models, which uh, will help you raise funding and execute and react to market feedback. So here we go. If you like this video, please like it and share it with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more very useful financial modeling tips every week. And if you'd like to take our free masterclass, Build Credible Financials for your venture, the link is in the description. We're also present on social media. So look at the links in the description, follow us everywhere, and we will be able to help you take your startup to the stars. Thanks so much, and I will see you next week.